We have a lot of news to cover in today's video, including some pretty significant signings for the Ottawa Senators and prospect Tim Stutzla. Mike Hoffman's going to camp with the St. Louis Blues. We have several other little signings and professional tryouts to talk about as well, as well as some NHL trade rumors focusing on the Habs, the Canucks, the Jackets, and the Bruins. We'll discuss all the latest coming up next. So welcome back to another video here at Top Shelf Hockey. Now, as I mentioned, we have a lot to cover here today. So this is certainly one of those videos you're going to want to listen closely and watch all the way through because there's a lot of little tidbits of news that have come out here out of the NHL really ever since the last few hours. Now, first up, we're going to talk about some signings, including some professional tryouts. Now, the news that just broke moments ago before I started to record was we found out Mike Hoffman is going to camp with the St. Louis Blues, except he has not signed a contract. He's going to... Blues camp on a PTO, on a professional trial, which is relatively surprising that the league's highest scoring uh, unrestricted free agent is going on a PTO. But I guess that gives them some flexibility, though. I mean, with training camps nearing, uh, it's probably a wise decision that he go there. Maybe the Blues are still working on creating a little bit of additional space here to sign him to the contract he wants. Rumor has it he's looking for a $5 million deal. Uh, and right now it's been speculated that he's being offered... You know, around 3, 3.5, maybe closer to 4 at most by different teams. Uh, the Blues and Bruins have been in the mix as well as a few other teams for the last number of weeks here. Um, but at least he has a place to go and, uh, and, you know, get ready for camp and start the season uh, possibly if he can get signed once he's there. But the thing is as well is just because he goes to camp with the Blues doesn't mean he can't sign elsewhere. So other teams can still talk and negotiate with them. There won't really be any preseason action or exhibition games this year, so it's not like other teams could have a chance to scout and watch them or anything like that. So it's a different kind of setup for this coming season, but we'll see what happens. I would think this more than likely does lead to a contract with St. Louis, as we've talked about before when it comes to their LTIR situation. They can put Alex Dean and Vladimir Tarasenko, both on long-term injury reserve, which will create some space to get him under contract. And he decided Vince Dunn as well. Uh, so I would suspect that some of these contracts will be hammered out here, but they can't officially put uh, all these players on LTIR here until the season starts. So it's probably going to be a case where he goes to camp and gets signed shortly thereafter, would be my guess. But all indications are Hoffman will be a St. Louis Blue. Another pretty significant signing that just took place in the last little bit here as well is the Ottawa Senators have finally signed a third overall pick from the 2020 NHL Draft. German-born top player from the World Juniors, Tim Stutzla, has signed his ELC uh, for the Senators. So that's good news. I know there's a lot of Sens fans who are you know, a little nervous that he might not sign and might end up playing over in Europe this year. Many Senators fans are looking for a lot of reasons to be optimistic and have something you know, fun and exciting to look forward to in training camp and beyond here since it's been so long since we've had Senators hockey. Uh, so that's a big signing for the Ottawa Senators, and they were actually quite generous as well with the performance bonuses. He gets the standard 925K, of course, uh, for entry-level deals. He gets 832.5K as a base salary with a $92,000 signing bonus, uh, which gets him to the 925. If he plays in the minors, his salary will be 80000 And, of course, he can earn an extra $2.5 million per season between his Schedule A and Schedule B bonuses. So, really solid contract. Not uncommon at all for someone who drafted so highly. Uh, he's been logging a ton of ice time for a depleted team in uh, Germany in the World Juniors so far. Played really, really well. Uh, and obviously Stutzla, whose nickname they're being calling him, T Timmy Superstar so far at the World Juniors. Uh, he's, he looks to be a dynamic player who's going to be a big boost for this end. So that's, that's a huge signing. So as soon as the World Juniors are done in Edmonton, he will go directly and report to Senators training camp. So he'll likely be a little bit late, obviously, as the Sens open camp up uh, here just in a few days later this week since they were one of the seven teams that didn't participate in the 2020 return to play playoffs. Now another signing here from the World Juniors as well, the, which actually took place the last couple of days, but we didn't include it in the prior videos. The New Jersey Devils have signed their first round pick from the uh, 2020 NHL Draft, Dawson Mercer, to his entry-level contract as well. Of course, we saw Mercer in Team Canada really batter that depleted German team, unfortunately, the other night. Uh, I believe the final score was 16-2. to uh, The German team it was not what you expected at all. They have a lot of players that are still going through isolation and quarantine because of COVID stuff that happened as they first arrived in the uh, World Juniors bubble. Uh, they only had like 13 or 14 skaters. The team was exhausted. By no means is that an actual true reflection of uh, what their quality of play is. They could certainly have had a much better game if they were at full strength. 
I still think Canada likely would have won, but it wouldn't necessarily have been anywhere near that lopsided. But Mercer was a big part of that victory, putting up several goals and assists. So big big start to the tournament for him, give him a confidence boost. Uh, so obviously that's a good signing for the Devils. And as he's shown in that game uh, in, in this World Junior so far, he's a very versatile player. He can pretty well play all three forward positions as well. Uh, can be very offensive and he can be reliable uh, in defensive positions too. So a good signing there, a good really first round solid pick by New Jersey in the 2020 NHL draft. Now, we also learned about several other professional tryout agreements that were signed here over the last few days as well. Uh, the Florida Panthers are going to have a couple of players in. Uh, one note, which we probably already mentioned before, was Scott Darling, uh, goaltender formerly of the Blackhawks and Hurricanes, who had left the NHL and went to Europe uh, for a little while, has come back and has got a tryout agreement with the Panthers. So he'll be in camp with them. And they've also signed defenseman Kevin Connaughton as well to a tryout as well. So uh, the, the Florida Panthers, uh, of course, made a lot of moves in the blue line throughout the offseason. I would think if Connaughton has a good camp, he would stand a good chance to probably get a one-year league minimum contract uh, with Florida. But I guess we'll see how things go when training camp opens here. Now, the Washington Capitals might have found a potential replacement here for Henrik Lundqvist. They've uh, brought in veteran goaltender Craig Anderson on a professional tryout uh, with the Caps. So he'll go to camp with them and see if he can earn himself a contract. Um, many of us were wondering if this would be the end of the road for Anderson as there hasn't really been any word on a potential deal for him so far this offseason. But with Henrik Lundqvist going down and having to sit out the season with a heart issue, then obviously that is uh, you know a, a big blow to the Capitals and for, for Hank. And Anderson's going to try to step in here and kind of take on a similar role if he can. I mean, at his age, if he can be a good mentor for Samsonov, he's incredibly you know uh, experienced, uh, playing in the NHL a long time, certainly been around for, uh, with many teams, but obviously his longest tenure with the Sens, and uh, he'll see if he can earn himself a contract to get that job as a backup goalie. I would think his odds are pretty decent, but I guess we'll see if they decide to go with the veteran or go with one of the other younger netminers already in their organization. Longtime NHL forward Mark Letestu has also announced his retirement. Of course, Letestu had several stops around the NHL, mostly with the Edmonton Oilers, uh, with the Columbus Blue Jackets as well, and Winnipeg Jets. Uh, so the longtime player is called it a career so congratulations to Latestu on everything he's accomplished and uh, we wish him the best here moving forward and we have had at least one opt-out for the NHL season uh, I don't think there's a lot of time left here for many to do so but Casey Nelson of the Buffalo Sabres who's on a two-way contract uh, had previously opted over just finding out about it now but I think it actually had happened a few days ago or something but uh, Nelson will not report to Sabres camp he is sitting out this season, no word yet on if that contract's going to be pushed a year or not, because um, that is an option that teams have for players that decide to opt out. Now, as I mentioned as well, regarding some of the NHL trade rumors, we're still bound to get some activity here as teams are trying to either become cap compliant or therefore, you know, kind of finalize their rosters heading into camp. There's still words that the Boston Bruins are really uh, trying to decide what to do with their blue line. There is a possibility, and I think it's slim based on everything we're hearing, that Captain Sedino Chara return. Uh, Chara's still looking to play from what we're hearing. He's interested in getting a new uh, new deal for probably one more season. Uh, his agent reported as many as 20 teams reached out to touch base and uh, you know express some interest, I guess you could say. But we're hearing now that the Bruins are contemplating going to the trade route, maybe even the free agent route, before they loop back to their longtime captain here on a potential contract. Uh, we've seen comments from uh, Cam Neely indicating that you know, they need to kind of talk to him and see what kind of role he feels he can play, where they feel he fits, if there is a fit. And, you know, this didn't really sound like there was anything close to a guarantee that he returns to be the Bruins captain. Uh, so they are exploring the trade market on the blue line. There is some talk they were interested in a free agent defenseman such as Ben Hutton. So that's a possibility they may go that route instead. But trading for a defenseman seems like a real possibility here. And it did sound like before, as I mentioned, that they were willing to part with young prospect Erho Vakanainen in order to get a more experienced blue liner. I would suspect if they do go ahead and do that, they're going to want somebody ideally either with a little bit of term or somebody who they could likely come to terms with and extend to become a, a Bruin for a longer period of time. I don't see them trading away you know, a, a decent prospect defenseman for somebody that's only going to be there for the short term. And, uh, you know, kind of leaving their captain in limbo here. So I guess we could see something develop out of this. But at this point, it does seem relatively unlikely that he returns to Boston. But no guarantees, of course. We'll have to watch this situation over the next few days as the Bruins ultimately decide what direction they are going in. Now, 
When it comes to the Columbus Blue Jackets, there's still word that they're shopping for a top six forward. Looks to looking for some more firepower. Uh, they've attempted several, you know, free agent considerations that have not worked out. They still need to get Pierre Luc Dubois signed, which is obviously a big deal for them as well. But obviously, getting some more offense up there would be key for them now. David Savard's name is still floating around the rumor mill substantially, uh, being tossed around that they were willing to trade him for a uh, you know a top six or top nine forward at the very least. Uh, and they could also go the route of trading a goaltender like Jonas Corposalo, who was chomped quite a bit during the offseason earlier. So, I mean, they could return with both goalies, but uh, I think at this point they'd probably prefer to trade Savard, but if the right deal comes along, especially for that right winger, then obviously Corposalo could find himself on the move as well. So keep your eye on the Jackets and the teams, obviously, that are looking to make trades to free up some cap space. The Jackets could be an ideal trading partner, depending on what they're willing to take back. So... Obviously, you're looking at teams like you know Vegas and Tampa, etc. But, of course, they may not be able to take Savard back. So, debatable on what they could work out there. But the Jackets are looking for help, and uh, we'll see what they can find here. Now, when it comes to the Montreal Canadiens, there's word that Victor Mete could find himself on the move. Of course, they've uh, made several uh, moves this offseason, and, you know, not really through the whole team, goaltending, defense, and in the forward group. But the defense group is a little bit crowded right now. And having some additions like Joel Edmondson and uh, youngster Alexander Romanov, who's expected to not only come to camp and be with the team, but likely grab a regular spot, which should basically will jump ahead of Mete here uh, on depth chart pretty much immediately, which kind of makes him expendable. And they have other young defensemen already in the system too, like Noah Juleson, Kale Fleury, who don't have guaranteed NHL roster spots either. So Mete's a name that's been out there. You know, I think with the right team, he could still be a regular NHL defenseman and really find his spot to kind of break through in a, in a more offensive role. Um, so it would not be shocking if Montreal parted with Mente for some kind of future considerations, whether it be a draft pick or maybe a different uh, younger prospect that they could maybe build into their system, uh, you know, at a later time. But Mente seems to be the odd man out. Doesn't mean for sure he'll be dealt. He very well could find himself on the taxi squad or maybe even in the minors this year. But he's a player that has, has enough NHL experience that, I think the Habs will look to part with to kind of free up a roster spot here in the near future. Now, lastly, we want to touch on the Vancouver Canucks. A lot of today's information as well on the trade talk comes from the fourth period.com where they updated their list of players that they feel will likely or most likely be traded throughout the offseason. Of course, several had already been dealt because this, the list has been something they started way back when the offseason first started. It's been being updated as we go along here and as things evolve. Uh, and right now, uh, a guy like Brandon Sutter for the Canucks is on there as the Vancouver Canucks try to find some cap space. Obviously, trading Louis Erickson is going to be not, you know, pretty much impossible. It's not likely not happening. And there is apparently interest, according to the fourth period, in Sutter's contract. He's only got one year left on it, just shy of $4.4 million. Apparently, uh, they had been, had been linked to like, teams like Arizona and Detroit. Not really sure Arizona's a fit, in my opinion. We saw them trade Derek Stepan to Ottawa earlier today. Uh, obviously, that freed up some space for them. I don't see them then bringing in another guy who's actually going to be paid out more of a salary than Stepan, because even though Stepan's cap is higher, his actual payout would be less. To me, that doesn't really fit Arizona unless they made another trade, which is just, I, I'm not sure that's really going to make sense. Now, could Detroit make a move? I would not be one bit surprised if the Red Wings do pick up another veteran player from somebody before the start of the season to kind of take advantage of their cap space. But they're going to want some kind of sweetener to make it happen. Uh, they could do business with the Canucks. They could do business with a team like Vegas or Tampa or any of those teams that are hard up for cap space. I don't think we're going to see them take on much more. But one more player in that kind of situation to me could make sense. And obviously the Canucks make sense if they're going to move somebody that it would be Sutter. But they also have to figure out their long-term injury reserve situation. Is Michael Furlan going to be able to play this year? Doesn't look like it right now. So that's some extra wiggle room they could get because of his contract going on LTIR. Uh, and obviously that may not be completely clear until camp opens, but would not be a bad idea if they did move out of contract and free up some necessary space here just to have more flexibility. And they're going to have to likely keep Louis for one more year. Even if they bury him in the minors, it's still, they're only going to get a little bit over a million dollars cap relief. That's not going to really be enough to, to do a whole lot with. So we'll see. There's also been links that the Canucks are considering adding another blue liner like a Travis Hamannick too. So clearly if they're going to do that, they need to find some space and some way to make it happen. So that is all for today. Let me know your thoughts on something discussed down in the comments. I know that's lots of news, but lots to discuss. We have a very active, busy news season. As we get closer and closer to the camp's opening, the seven teams that missed the playoffs 
or opening camps here in just a matter of like a few days as they get closer to the 31st here. So let me know your thoughts in the comments and we'll discuss further. If you're new to the channel, consider subscribing and turning on your notifications so you don't miss any future content. And give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. I'd appreciate it if you did. As always, thank you for watching and I'll catch you next time.